you so much guys for coming in at 6:30 sharp and i know a lot of the cps students are there today and web of i made them to uh, attend this mandatorily because i know how many questions they have on the cpa practice there are so many things and who's better than you who's addressing because you are uh, being there since so many years so first of all we are very very happy and proud to have you here today and uh, over to you sangeeta so that you can give a brief introduction about vibhav and then he can take it forward from there thank you so much vibhav thank you shifa always a pleasure to speak thank you sir i'd like to extend a very warm welcome to our speaker mr vibhav manik and also thank each and every one of you for here for being here with us today for webinar on value creation and value unlocking in organization Mr. Vibhav Manik is a highly experienced business leader. He holds a master in commerce from Mumbai University, fellow chartered accountant, US CPA, executive education from Howard Business School and many more. Sir is currently the partner and co-founder at KNAV and he's the lead partner the business advisory services with member firms in USA, India, UK, Canada, Netherlands and Singapore. He has experienced his experiences include management consulting, M&A transaction and by advisory and professional service firms. Previously, sir spoke on many topics like doing business in US, uh, strategies for growth, organization development, etc. in various platforms. Apart from this, sir is also in, uh, interested in writing, like he co-authored the CA form of the future, and he is also into volunteering. So sir will speak on the topic for about 30 to 35 minutes. Meanwhile, you can put your questions in the chat box and you can even uh, raise your hands. We'll take your questions. Thank you, sir, for taking out your time from your busy schedule. And now I'd like you to take over the webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Sangeeta. And uh, Shripal, thank you very much. Um, appreciate this opportunity. Always a pleasure to uh, you know, share some thoughts in the bargain. It's always my experience that I learn the most. Um, and I know it's a Saturday evening and we are keeping everybody away from your weekend. So really appreciate, uh, I can say about 85 participants. So really appreciate all of you joining in. Uh, I promise to, uh, you know, make it up to you in terms of giving you everything that I know about the world of finance, especially in terms of the opportunities that are there before all of us. And when either whether you are starting out, whether you basically, you know, have had lots of experience in various organizations. If you are looking at setting up your own CPA firm or a chartered accountancy practice or a finance practice, or you would like to have a career in finance and you're already here and growing from your, whatever may be your motive, uh, my endeavor will be in the next 60 odd minutes, share some thoughts, share some practical ideas. Where are we today? How, how can we get there? Especially if one looks at the organizations today, how do you unlock value? So I am grateful that Sripal chose this theme of unlocking a value for financial professionals. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. So what I plan to do is, you know, just take you through some ideas, some thoughts, and then look at various practical nuances of what do organizations expect? What do businesses expect from finance professionals? Okay, very, very important. Um, it's not enough to learn. It's not enough what you know, but what the organizations and clients expect today, uh, your client or your customer could be your CEO. If you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a finance or in a larger organization, looking at finances, it could be a CFO whom you are reporting to. It could be an investor. So all the stakeholders whom you interact with, they are effectively your customers. If you are running a professional practice on your own, or you're thinking about starting a professional practice, your clients become your key customers. And you need to have thinking mindset about how do I create value? And thereafter, how do I unlock value for each of this uh, you know, ecosystem, each of these individuals within your stakeholder community? So that's what I'm going to th throw some light on. And let me start with saying that, look, all of you have done uh, so far in your programs, you've done well. You've been either you are either you are a CPA student, or you have qualified, or you are in process of doing so. You've built a career, or you're wishing to build a career. The initial thought that I want to really share is, growth 
will come to all of us as professionals, provided we are willing to disrupt ourselves. Now, what do I mean when I say disrupt? Okay, see, the word is very clear. One is, I want to re redo, reset, look at things, uh, look at processes, look at transactions, look at businesses and business models in a manner that status quo is not always the best strategy. You want to think out of the box. You want to think what is the new way of doing business. Paytm was not there until, uh, let's say, five years, seven years back. Demonetization happened, okay, in November 16. And you saw that everybody moved on from the physical cash to online payments, even a shopkeeper down the road. Now, if most of you are technology savvy and you could do it, but think of a milkman, think of a dhobi, think of a, you know, anybody having a small business, they are today able to accept payments. So there was a disruption in the entire payment ecosystem. You don't have to go to a bank to write a check. You can just show your, your phone, scan the code and you are through. It could be a 20 rupees auto rickshaw fare, a 50 rupees purchase of a bread from a shopkeeper or you know a million dollar transaction if as a professional you want to think out of the box and you want to think about disruption and if you have the intent and therefore the will you will grow okay today will one man argue i'm in covid 19 what do i do there is a lockdown i can't travel as much all those are excuses you one may say survival is also akin to growth Sure, for some time, sure. But ultimately, as a finance professional, as a budding professional, you are responsible, I'd use the word responsible, to ensure, for ensuring that your organization looks out of the window, looks at opportunities, and you, as a big constituent, an important constituent, enables your organization to think disruptively, to think out of the box. Now, how do we do it? It's great to have a thought. How do we do it? That's a natural question. I'm going to address that. Okay. Now, just look at what's happening around all of us. Of course, COVID-19 has shaken, let's say, the professional service industry. For sure, it has completely shaken. There's a lot of uncertainty. Customers are grappling. Clients don't know what to do. They're not. Some of them are not growing as fast. Some of them have eventually figured out what to do. Most of us are trying to seek constant information, trying to make sense of trends, maybe perhaps sometimes worried, okay? Definitely it is not end of the world, but we can't continue to work in old times. Our clients, our customers expect a lot more. And therefore, what is this expectation from our customers or from businesses? Just look at from a, from a, from a business point of view. If they are not getting a lot more orders or if their customers are not doing well, the businesses themselves are not growing as fast. Now, if you have to maintain your profitability or you have to maintain and survive in today's environment, businesses will expect leaner models, cost efficient models. And therefore, the status quo has never been riskier. You got to think out of the box to see what can I, how can I be more asset light? Do I need a physical office infrastructure? When everybody's able to work from home, why can't I have a model which is virtual, completely virtual or partly virtual? Yes, I want to meet people, but you can still have meeting rooms and you can have you know, businesses who will still give you orders and they expect services from you. So there are cost efficiencies and there are leaner models. And that's where as a finance professional, I would always look at out of the box. Even if, we, even if there was no COVID-19 and let's say in a few months, we are completely out of it. You will, you will want to continue the lean model so that you can allocate resources. Now, as a finance professional, you go to learn and you go to constantly work at allocating capital to budgets, uh, to, to, to strategies which will help you to transform the organization. And you need a good cash curve, a good cash run for that. This is one way in which when you think about DNA models and cost efficiencies, you will be able to challenge the current status quo. Okay, so this is an expectation of a customer and you'll have to fulfill it. And therefore, looking at your own career progression and looking at how would you want to make a change in the ecosystem 
a simple question for everybody is it time to think differently think about growth okay you have to have putting if if your if your ecosystem that i just spoke about if they want to grow okay your career progression is clearly linked and it's proportional to how your organization grows in in a like way you know if the firm is not growing or if the business is not growing you're not going to grow as fast ultimately you have to be in alignment with the firm and the business model and therefore how do you think differently now a lot of people have already done it how do we do it just look at this one you have facebook facebook does it create content it expects us as users to put content paytm fastest growing bank no branches netflix one of the world's largest entertainment movie houses no cinema no asset google take example after example uber no taxis airbnb no hotel rooms no real estate but the largest accommodation provider alibaba right world's most valuable retailer doesn't really own inventory amazon so you'll have multiple examples of what have all of these guys done i took the example of paytm that happened right in our doorstep right in india they thought differently they thought that somewhere why should a customer really depend on a bank why do you need a physical bank you have a smartphone you have a basic internet connection why can't we transact online now if they can think differently why can't all of us okay and therefore if you think about your organization that here is how we should think about various aspects of the business model be it revenues be it or internal organization all the costs be it the intangible assets be it tangible assets be it corporate governance decision making business planning you will come up with ideas my objective here today is think about ideas think about sustainable models and you will grow very fast that's the way to think so that's the first message i want to drive home think differently okay very very critical now let's look at you have a blank white screen in front of you if you have to think differently how will you draw an architecture of an organization okay and how will you help to create value and then unlock value and you are a finance professional you have qualified done all the hard work so you go back to basics just like an architect who is trying to draw a uh, you know the create the entire architecture for an a uh, large building complex or a university or what have you as a finance professional how can you draw this architect architecture or this plan for the business so let's start with a basic first pillar here vision strategy you can't have a business model your client or the business in which you are working you cannot function without a vision okay? you need a strategy to support the vision okay you need a structure you need to finance it you need business model you need people teams uh, shripal just mentioned before, when we were starting off uh, and we were testing um, the technology here that he is spending a lot of time managing teams okay? and then how do you develop the organization so each one of these has a very basic architecture around it what is vision very simple question very simple line what do you want to become what's your vision for the future strategy how will you execute or get there you say i want my organization to be x y and z what is the road map to get there what is your mission how do you get there that strategy put it down put it down on a piece of paper on a word file on a powerpoint file and discuss build a structure around it you of course need an entity and a location right now you have various options today various if you are in india you can be a private company llp partnership firm what have you you can look at international operations okay there structuring how do you think about growth if you are even if you are an india company but you have customers outside of india be it in us or whichever country you need a structure that supports you to kind of execute transaction so that's location okay and the right structure helps you to grow fast then you need capital okay now you know you can generate capital from own sources from outside sources you can go to banks you can go to investors okay you can if if the if your business model is good you have already been making profit you can do an ipo multiple ways of raising funds but very critical as a business owner 
and you as a finance executive there, that you help the organization think through what is the best way to raise money? How much money? What instrument? How am I going to price that instrument? Am I ready for finance? Do I need to have a proper investment deck, uh, investment uh, memorandum? Do I have a real business plan? Can I rework it? Can I make it friendly enough? As is my strategy coming out there correctly? All of this has to be thought through for attracting the right set of investors and for raising the right set of capital. Business model. How are you thinking about your existing business? In COVID-19, there are a lot of challenges on cash flows. Growth is not easy for every industry. Pharmaceuticals are doing great. A typical residential or a commercial real estate business model is not working. Nobody is going to offices. Nobody needs commercial um, properties. People are not investing in big luxury assets, right? No big cars, no fancy flights, no travel. If you're a travel company, how do you grow today? So you need to think through your, your business model in terms of being customer focused. What does a customer want? How can you increase centricity? Are you asset light, asset intensive, people oriented? So you have to think through your business model or rethink your business model. Most important or very important, get the right team in place. Okay. You can never have in less of that or enough of that. The team has to be right sized. Um, you need to have, you need to think through every function in the organization. At some point, you will need an independent marketing organization, a marketing function. Of course, you need your key operations. It starts with that. You need technology function, you need quality, you need HR. As you grow a separate admin, procurement, legal, you need a full-time CEO, a CFO. You can become, have outsourced CFOs. As a finance organization, you can add a lot of value to each one of these functions. And then of course you need a board and an advisory board. Now, as a leader or as a to-be leader, can you help your organization think through each of these functions? If you're going to be practicing, you need to advise your clients that do you have the right team component? You're not going to grow without each one of these. And finally, last but not the least, you need to have a focused business plan. You need to institutionalize balance coca or any other strategic growth model. Now, if you think of it, right, this one slide helps you to think through the whole organization. I'm a finance professional. How can I help my business to think through? Here is the answer, okay? If you think this in separate buckets, and then if you link it, you would have created a working model and architecture of your business organization. If you do that well, you can dovetail into this one and you say, okay, I've understood, here is my vision, here is how I'll go there. And I now want to ensure that I'm growing right. Okay, I'm doing well. Can I grow right? Can I grow enough? You need to have some semblance of your outcomes. If you see the bottom layer here, right? And I, I drew it so that it's easy for everybody to kind of take home. You need, what is the outcome that you are trying to seek? So we need loyal customers, very important. You need very motivated and you need strong team members. You need partners, vendors, the entire ecosystem who is satisfied and with efficient processes. Everything is connected, right? If you have loyal customers, who have been working with you year on year, giving you repeat orders, and they've been serviced well with motivated team members, and you have an ecosystem of vendors, partners, who have who know that when your when the invoice goes to your organization, they're going to get paid. Or if it's any other partner, any other service provider, they know that your organization stands up for what it has signed. Contractually, you're always honoring what you have agreed to. Then you create trust. Okay. And then all of it is linked with processes. You're effectively creating a very sound execution plan. Now, I always believe that one should think about growth drivers. See, when we talk about the organization here, okay, we, we looked at the whole structure, financing, but at the end of the day, we have to operate the business. This organization structure and this skeleton that we've built the architecture is useless if you don't construct the building or if you don't construct the edifice or if you don't operate the business well. So that's where your execution plan then becomes the key. How are you going to sell to your customers? 
market? Who is going to do it? What are the measures? What are the targets? And what is your plan? Very critically identify growth drivers at every stage. And that's how you think about unlocking value. So you create value and then you think about what is the next best step. And again, in this context, friends, look at your organization very, very minutely. And I'll tell you, um, <clears throat> this is very commonsensical if one thinks of it, right? Look at your organization and say, what does it really consist of? Or where should my grow, uh, focus be as a finance professional? I would look at the external organization first. So the first box here talks about revenue growth. Revenue growth is you want to ensure that your business model is such that you have profitable growth. At some point of time, profits are important. You cannot just have revenues and keep incurring, keep burning cash and keep having losses for years together. All your investors will run away. Investors will fund faster growth and revenue growth for to a point of time, but they will need to see a path to profitability. Okay. Yes, one may argue that Amazon made losses for 20 years, Flipkart is still making losses. All of those arguments are on one side. They've grown to a size and they are market leaders and they know what they are doing. But when you are starting up and when you are, or when you're advising a business model or you are part of a business model as a CFO, remember investors would want to see profitable growth. And this will come if you think about scale, volumes, have a differentiated pricing strategy. So this is the first bucket. Look at the external customers in the environment and we'll talk about customers in a little while. Then simultaneously, I would look at the internal organization. What are the costs? How do you think about direct costs, your supply, your services, labor, all of that? Look at your overheads, the SGNA, the selling general and administrative. Do you have a sound budgeting process? Okay, how are you measuring your, uh, or how are you benchmarking your costs to the industry? So as a finance professional, the one thing I would do is pick up all my competitors, their balance sheets, their annual accounts, everything is available online and on databases. Look at them and say, am I spending, am I overspending? Am I underspending? Am I spending the right level? You need to do that benchmarking clearly so that you are allocating the right resources to the right functions. And that's where the selling general and administrative costs make a big difference. So for example, am I spending enough on advertising? Do I need a brand ambassador to sell a product or a service? Do I, can I do away with all of that? And can I just use social media marketing? Can I use LinkedIn to good effect? Can I use Facebook to good effect? Can I go to Amazon through Google and say, here is how, if I'm an Amazon reseller, where should I, how should I promote myself? Can I use some promotion tools there? So various ways, various selling costs. Similarly, very important. Have you thought through your tax efficiencies, tax models? Are you taking all the benefits, the credits that the system has to offer to you? Are you filing things correctly? Are you in compliance? Then look at the third bucket here. Intangible, tangible assets and working capital. Very, very important. A lot of businesses in India have not grown as fast or they could have grown much faster if they're thought through a whole business model. Okay. And I'm going to spend some time on it. When, when you say business model, you need to ensure that the brand, the IP, the intellectual property that your business has created, okay, is very well captured in an essence, in an essence document, which says, here is how every IP, every intangible property, every, every intellectual property in my business model, okay, here is how I've created them, here is how I've maintained them, here is how I'm growing them. In a, from, a, from a structuring parlance, we call it a DEMPE function. DEMPE is an acronym for DEMPE, -E, development, enhancement, maintenance, okay? preservation, exploitation. When I am growing an intangible asset, let's say a brand, okay? how have I developed it? What is the spend that I have done to bring it to this stage? How am I enhancing it? Development, enhancement. Okay, how do I keep enhancing it? How, how am I maintaining it? Now, Coca-Cola is a brand or take any other Indian business, right? As a brand, what am I doing constantly to maintain it? How am I preserving the legacy? What am I doing to preserve the brand? And then constantly exploiting it to good effect for growth. So development, enhancement, maintenance, you know, preservation, exploitation. That's how I continue to 
nurture my brand and that is my intangible asset it doesn't come on the balance sheet most of this cost are expensed out as per accounting norms but you have created a huge value out of it now look at take an example you know if the tata group tomorrow starts a jewelry business they already have tanishk but let's say they didn't have tanishk as a brand within titan if you know tanishk the jewelry brand is within house within titan um, as a listed organization but let's say there was no tanishk to them and you had all the other jewelers your your friendly neighborhood jewelers and you had some good brands but tomorrow tata starts a new business tata jewels okay what is the first thing that comes to your mind and when you're buying jewelry it's very important what is that one word i would argue trust okay i trust the brand when tata is saying i'm we are doing something i can blindly go and purchase the gold or the jewelry and i can be rest assured that i will have enough in terms of quality in terms of quantity i don't do worry about the 22 carat the 24 carat it will be what they say what is written is what i'm going to get i can blindly trust that is the value of an intangible that's the value of brand look at bisleri water you know if i give you two bottles okay both are priced let's say 10 rupees on one there's a label green label which says bisleri on the other i remove the label and even the cap is a normal cap but still green color cap but there's no bisleri written and there's no label and i put this two bottles before you and i say both are priced at 10 rupees obviously your choice is going to be the first one because there is a brand there what if i tell you now no it is not 10 rupees it is 10 for bisleri but it's only 5 rupees for the second bottle but there is no brand there but it got it's clean water it's water now you choose as a customer what would you do chances are that most of you will still say no yaar it's water it's my health i don't know where this other bottle is sourced i still pay the 10 rupees that difference even though it's 5 rupees costlier the first bottle is 10 rupees second is 5 you're still willing to pay 10 because of the brand that is the value of the brand okay take another example a cadbury right i i have a cadbury chocolate bar that's let's say priced at 50 rupees and there there's some local brand i've not heard of price at 30 rupees and if i have to get a chocolate for myself or for anybody <coughs> excuse me even though this is 50 and this is 30 what am i going to buy the answer is very clear and that is the value of the cadbury brand friends as a finance professional one very very critical thing with lot of people miss is how can i contribute to this intangible development what can i do differently now look at from there you look at tangible assets <coughs> sorry guys from intangible i'll move to the tangible assets fixed assets if i am into manufacturing my machinery plant and machinery equipments if i am into services my technology infrastructure what am i doing to ensure that everything that my operating team needs to be functional is well oiled it's a well oiled machinery <coughs> excuse me it's a well oiled machinery they have the right tools to perform they are always at the forefront when it comes to output so output never suffers that's the hallmark of a good functioning organization that everything your your technology infrastructure your people infrastructure the office assets uh everything that people need to perform uh in terms of their daily output services contracts your 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 your, your filing mechanisms so the the office environment gives you all that now imagine you are work from home how do you ensure that the same thing works well we, it's our responsibility to ensure that every individual even though is working from home is still having in home office environment somewhere you got to equip them with right basic tools of functioning smart speed good internet speed a good tech, good computer a laptop or what have you and a good working space and if that is ensured and if enough attention is paid by the founding team to tangible assets i can tell you the output will not suffer most of us have been at home for almost 5 6 months now some of us have started going to offices but yet we are not really missing the office in a true sense by and large we are okay yes communication etc is not the best you can always do better 
but the organization is developing valuation are still rising if you grow your business if you think about profitable growth shareholder value is not getting impacted for businesses which have thought through this in fact the the capital markets are back to 90 95% of their pre covid levels and very soon as we completely get out of this hopefully soon we will be at a uh, much much higher valuation so therefore as a business model again when you are looking at growth and we are looking at creating an unlocking value your intangible assets and tangible assets very very critical and finally your working capital your inventory your your also time of your people receivables payables how how are we as a finance professional thinking about this in the organization do i have processes in place procure to pay right right from procurement to the actual payment my accounts payable function my purchasing function similarly from sale to cash my receivables function when i'm selling goods or providing services to collecting it from the customers have i optimized all the processes very very critical today in covid times to collect money fast inventory inventory of goods inventory of time do i have the right blended model of time and material versus fixed price do i think through the time of my people as a finance professional we do need to contribute very very systematically and have an organized way to measuring okay the working capital needs and then to ensure that the organization is well equipped to service those needs if we can do that you will never have a challenge of being over leveraged or cash not being available for growth very very critical and lot of businesses friends have not grown because they have not thought through their working capital needs or they don't have efficient processes to ensure that working capital positivity is there finally very very critical is governance a corporate governance business planning decision making collaborations partnerships how do you think about the organization from a point of view of planning most of you have heard this businesses don't plan to fail they fail to plan you don't have a plan in front of you it's not written it's in the head some document is prepared nobody looks at it it was just to file with somebody you can't do that the business plan is a living functioning document you have to keep at it keep updating it make sure that it reflects today's times and as a finance professional again you can contribute in more ways than one you can actually write the whole business plan nobody understands it better the entire financial model the entire valuation of your business your growth assumptions cost assumptions working capital assumptions and you can play a very big role in ensuring that the business plan is well developed and is constantly updated again it's an intangible whose value has survived the test of time when we talk about creating value and enhancing value and then unlocking value it's all about business planning then decision making how is your organization taking decisions you can question it as a finance professional is my ceo is my founder taking the right decisions okay. can i do i see an element of impropriety do i see an element of hesitation are we taking bolder bets or are we taking extremely bold bets which are not necessary how do i think of risk management and managing the the external risk and the internal risks the market risks the geographic risks risks political risk lot of equal, lot of things play when we talk about a business model so am i uh, am i thinking about those and warning and bringing this points to the management in the board meetings then do we think about partnerships do we think about collaborative growth it is so important today that you can't just grow in a cocoon you need to think through that what is the right way to collaborate even the reliance group today after all this year you have seen a lot of value unlocking happening in geo platforms x billion dollars getting pumped from 10 marquee investors worldwide now you are hearing reliance retail you know they've looked at geo mart and through geo mart they we know that retail grocery everything is going to be at the doorstep much more efficiently and they are going to unlock value there so this has not happened overnight it's a lot of planning of 2 3 4 5 7 years a lot of vision thinking visionary thinking about data and then what you see is the outcome and even then reliance retail has got maximum collaboration they've got over 100 partnerships with leading brands mark and spencer any foreign brand or money they are all partners of reliance when they came into india and if they can think about collaborations every organizations from small to medium to large should think about collaborations all the time 
friends, if one now thinks this through, this whole model, right? We started with revenue. We looked at the internal organization, the organization costs. We looked at intangible assets, tangible assets, and working capital, and then governance. If you do this right, you would have created a well-oiled machinery. A well-oiled machinery which will grow. Your business will grow. If you grow, you create value. If you create value, you can unlock value. All right. So this one slide actually captures it all. Now, how do you take components out of this? I told you about revenue, right? Now, look at customers. Look at your business model. I would ask five questions to every organization. Be it my organization, be it my client organization. What is your company's mission? How will you achieve your vision? That's your mission. Okay. Then go and redefine the definition of customer. Who is your customer? And what does your customer consider value? A very basic innocuous question. Now let's say, if I say Simander Education as a business model, who is a customer for this organization? Probably some of you, all of you. Now, if there are, if we have 1.2 billion people in the country, 1.3 billion, it's 130 crores. And we are told the prime minister made a comment the other day that 65% of India is below the age of 35. Okay. And if I take 1.3 billion and 65%, we're talking about roughly about 80, 80 crores. Let's say hypothetically 80, 85 crores. Now if 80, 85 crores are below the age of 35, let's say half of them are between, um, 15 and 35. So that gives you about 40 crores. You have 40 crore people who are between the age of 15, 20 and 35, right? Now, is that an addressable customer population for Simander education? You will say, no, not 15, let's push the age to 20 and not 35, but let's say 30, 20 to 30. Okay. Take 50% off. So from 40 crores, you come up to 20 crores. You still have an addressable population base of 20 crores. Now let's assume that 10% of those of the 20 crores are taking commerce education, finance education, economics, business education. You come down to two crores. Now remember from 130 crores, you've come down now to two crores, 10% of 20 crores. So your addressable customer base is two crores. When I say who is your customer, it's not all of India. It is two crores out of the 130 crores. Now you can further segment it to professional programs, etc., And you come down to a market size, which means this education business, I can sell to two crore people. Okay. I'm giving you some 10% is rough. Of course, one has to do a very clear benchmark. Now, once I've done that, what does your customer consider value? What is value to this two crore people? Is it the degree, the qualification, or is it the knowledge? Is it the application of knowledge or is it both? We have to decide any business, I just took education as one business. Look at any business, technology business, consumer focused business, pharmaceuticals, any business. You need to have a very clear definition of what is value to your customer. So in this case, some of you are students here, you, know, you need a good knowledge and an application base of the knowledge. You also need the qualification, you need a license. Some of you may be thinking of starting up your own business model, starting up your own professional service firm. How do you think about CPA as a career in US? That is value for you. So if an organization is telling you that, that here is, here are the five things to think before you start a CPA practice, or here are the 10 things to, to, to think when you're starting a finance startup, that's your business plan. So what is your plan? You know, your customer base, you know, this is a market size and have, can you think through a plan which will attract, uh, these customers? and get them to buy products or services from you. And then you measure it. What are the results? So remember when you go to customers and when you say that at the end of the day, I want to grow, I want to have profitable growth, volume growth, pricing strategy. You need to first understand your business model pretty well, and you need to define it very well. What's your mission and who is your customer? What does he consider value? What is your plan? What are the results? Each of these is interlinked. And if you think through these five questions, you would have created a scalable business model. Now, when I say scalable business model, you need systems, processes, you need capital, finance, we discussed it, you need good management teams, and you need innovation. You cannot grow trends today without being innovative. You need Paytm thought through much ahead of time. Now you have a lot of other banks. 
Indigo Airlines thought too much ahead of time. How can I be profitable? How can I still scale up my airline business? And how do I become a market leader? In 12 to 15 years, Indigo just started in 2005. In 2016, it was in the pole position. It was the market leader by far. Other airlines collapsed. Some, some of them have survived are not making money. This is the only airline this is really making money. Now people have realized here is the way to do low cost. If I'm flying for an hour and a half, I don't care about a fancy meal. I don't care about a fancy uh, interior. What I need is safety, safe travel, quick travel. I don't want to be late. And I want to ensure that I'm paying the least amount as far as possible. I'm not burning cash. Here, through innovation, an airline has said, here is how we'll make money for ourselves. And here is how we'll pass on that money to you as a customer by giving you a good, efficient product. Remember, friends, in Indian aviation, in the aviation space, you don't make money from just ticket, just selling tickets. You actually make money by saving costs. Okay, And for that, Indigo said, we'll have an innovation model. We will keep more of our planes in the air. So let's say if an Air India has six rotations or seven rotations of the planes in a, in a day, and Indigo Airline is eight or nine rotations. And Indian aviation economics say that you make money only after seven rotations, which means the flight goes seven times during the day. Out of 24 hours, you can fly about 18, 19 hours. You can't fly from 12 to five, let's say all the flights. So you have really 18, 19 hours. And that to do seven rotations or eight will determine whether you're profitable or you're not making money. Indigo is consistently above eight and nine. A lot of the others are below eight and therefore you don't make money. So these are basic things. This is innovation. And to do that, what does Indigo do? Time. Everything about them is on time. So that's a model which has worked. Various such examples, right? Now, look at some data here. This is a McKinsey study which says that, and if I just look at the last few years, okay? In fact, last year itself, um, and this is very, very interesting. It also opens up your mindset if you think. Where are finance professionals CF for spending their time? So four in 10, okay, four in 10 have actually spent most of their time on strategy, transformation, or other non-finance areas, almost 41%. So what are this 41% doing strategic leadership? Some of them have answered multiple, uh, they've picked up multiple, therefore you are saying this, this one add 200, but strategic leadership, organization transformation, performance management, all of this is business management, all of this is growth. Right? Allocation of capital, big data. Today as a finance professional, you need to think through the data before you. It's all about data and then analytics and analysis of that data. Your capabilities, okay? Are you, are you thinking about technology trends, other functions, risk management, procurement? That's, a, that's almost four in 10. You have another four in 10 or 4.5 in 10, which says traditional finance. I'll still keep, I'll still keep doing my accounting. Somebody should do it. Controllership, budgeting, planning, analysis, and then People have moved on to specialty finance areas, treasury, audit, tax, investor relations. Now that's a broad spectrum of where CA for the spending time. Now, if two th if forty percent of your time is going to go on all of these, okay, or or a lot of people are spending most of their time on all of these, that just tells you where is the finance function headed. Okay. Also look at this. Now, if, who is reporting to the CFO in an organization matrix? You have risk management guys, regulatory compliance, MA guys, technology, corporate strategy. They're all reporting to CFOs, procurement, investor relations, post merger integration, digital, cybersecurity. So, as a finance professional, you have a lot of functions reporting to you. Okay, almost if I look at an average, it says 4.53. Now, four or five functions are reporting to you, and you are going to spend so much time in all of this you are in demand. As a finance professional, you're right up there. You're almost the, effectively the de facto CEO. A lot of finance professionals have gone and become CEOs and managing directors of organizations because they understand all of that. So friends, compliment yourself, yourselves for what you have elected. You've elected to be a finance professional. Okay? You are, for the next 25, 30, 40 years, I don't see big data, I don't see machine learning or automation really impacting your jobs, but you have to be at it. You got to ensure that you use technology, use all the tools and perform your function better. You have to diversify what you are doing. Again, it's a mindset. If you think differently, each of these is within your area of expertise. There's nothing here, which is rocket science. Okay. Now, 
when we say a finance function and we are going to become a cfo very soon or you want to as you aspire to be a cfo if you are in the organization then i'll talk about the practices then what can cfos do better what is partnership all about how do you kind of ensure that you give the best to your organization as a finance professional so the so there are three aspects here to look at one is capital allocation okay that that's a traditional role everybody knows you know budgeting capital budgeting but ultimately can you focus the capital to the strategic priorities of the company you know people used to spend 3% of their revenues on r&d sometimes 8% sometimes 10% of revenues on sales and marketing those percentages are just indicators you go to ensure that you have allocated the budgets correctly to meet the strategic priorities of the companies what does your business want what does your ceo want what is your board approving then you also have to ensure that the capital strategy links okay your uh, need for growth investments and technology developments you got to be aligned to where is the actual money needed just just don't go by what has happened in the past always reset always think out of the box then look at so you can't just do internal projections look at near markets alliances mergers and acquisitions look at ways outside and say how are others growing what is the opportunity outside can i look at new physical markets can i enter into new geographies should i acquire businesses should i merge with a business should i look at people acquire acquire higher various such models that are emerging and then while budgeting is fine outside growth is fine you go to take a very long term strategic view so the short term things are then offset this this is challenging it's not easy you need to think through long term where is my organization headed and that's where a long term business plan gives you the strategic direction when prepared well and when benchmarked well okay so remember if a finance profession of tomorrow has to think of each of these that's how you grow that's how your organization grows that's how your ecosystem grows okay i'm going to skip a couple of things but let me come back to as an as a as an individual what do you need to do so again we spoke about the whole balance scorecard we spoke about uh, you know scalable organizations but what does it take for the business to achieve sustained growth each of these functions okay you need to have a strategy to grow and sustain you need to have innovative products and a innovative function of coming out with new and new products apple is where it is because it thinks about innovation all the time procter and gamble look at every example look at big basket in india look at amazon in india the amount of innovation that it does look at flipkart right in covid 19 these were the businesses which still stood up very fast and keep on delivering goods and services to you day after day day after day most of us have not gone for grocery shopping or for picking up stuff because an amazon delivers it to your door place or a flipkart does the same now how have they thought through this whole supply chain and ecosystem that's where you need to have a real smart thinking okay here is what my customer wants and can i deliver that leveraging technology i don't want to repeat this but effectively if you can build a business model which is if you think it's growing fast enough also think about sustenance keep technology keep using technology more and more automating your functions will help you to reach much faster you know in a in a cricket balance i will say in covid times you go to it's not enough to score 200 or 300 in a one day match you go to score 350 consistently so you say 315 50 overs liquidity make sure you have enough liquidity in the business make sure everybody in your ecosystem has a mindset for growth okay very very critical your business segmentation is very important okay ultimately people pay for expertise make sure that your products or services provide the best value to a customer and you as a finance leader have to lead from the front taking decisive steps so smart action i'm just put an acronym here smart action can help navigate turbulent waters much much better okay yeah. ultimately friends performance is everything it's not about you know how much i know it's about how am i performing this is peter drucker for you one slide peter drucker wrote uh, a seminal work called the effective executive very propounded the concept of performance so ultimately it's all about performing right and he said he gave the seven steps and if you if anybody is interested pick up the book the effective executive it's available on amazon flipkart etc okay how do we increase efficiency how do we ensure that as an executive 
even when you're running your own firm, starting a practice or being in an organization, the first step is make sure your steps, your, your day-to-day -day functions and tasks are well organized. You can be well organized if you plan ahead of time. Have a written schedule and tracker. This is what I'm going to do from X time to Y time. Okay, here is how I'm going to meet. Keep some lean time for everything. You go to manage yourself better and therefore you can manage your teams better and the opportunities better. Early course corrections. Everything is not going to go as per plan. You got to have time for making early course corrections. Reflect what is working, what is not working. Something not working, immediately course correct. You have to be result oriented. Ultimately, you have to measure yourself and not at the end of the year, end of the month, constantly. Keep looking in the mirror and keep saying, where am I heading? What can I do differently? Report the outcomes. Timeliness is very critical. And that's how performance review happens in your teams and in your organizations. But ultimately, if you think about this, I can, I'm pretty sure that each one of you has the potential and the capacity to perform very well. And I'm going to end my thoughts by using this acronym FOCUS. Okay, when I say FOCUS, uh, for me, it is free mind. Be fearless. The world is your oyster. A lot of opportunities are going to come our way. Seize them. Don't just see them walking by. Think about what can you do in the opportunities? How can you grab them? Cultivate ideas. Okay, ideas are nobody's monopoly. Dhirubhai Ammani taught that to all of us. Keep giving ideas, keep cultivating ideas. Your organization needs your ideas and then go and implement them. Put up your hand and say, I'm the one who's going to implement this idea. Here is how I can help my organization to grow. Upgrade yourself. Some of the sessions and everything that you are doing to learn, keep constantly upgrading. There is no finite number of hours. It's a lifelong learning now. Keep reviewing, keep observing. And even by interactions, you can learn so much. So upgrading yourself. Finally, friends, hard work is very important. But even smart work is important. You have to have, you have to be smart about performing. Okay, those old days are gone. Why don't we use more technology, more automation, machine learning, get the machines to do your mundane job and you focus on the creative, creative side. If you think of each of these, right, as, as, a, as an acronym, if you have a focused approach to life, nothing can change your, your determination and you will grow pretty well. Be it finance professionals in organizations or in practice. Now, I just want to, uh, before I end, and I open the floor for questions, one last thought, and uh, again, an important thought. When you are saying that you are a finance professional, and I'm told some of you uh, in the room are pursuing your certified public accountancy program, I did want to spend some time on that. Now, um, over the last 21 years that we have been running k Navy, myself, my co-founders, all our partners, and all of our talented team members, there are certain principles that we have learned. The first is, if you are in India and you are a CPA in India, there's a lot of work for you in India itself. When I say work, I would say opportunities. You can be a certified public accountant, qualified from the US, take your license in any state if it's possible. Even without a license, even as a, as a CPA, you will still be absorbed in a lot of organizations in the finance function, accounting function, in corporate finance, in various functions within an organization provided you have, you're, you're giving an output. You're thinking about performance. You're thinking about what is it that I can contribute to the organization. So think of it as a CPA, US gap, you are learning a US accounting, generally account, generally accepted accounting principles. I don't have to tell you US gas and US gap. You've been learning it. I'm assuming uh, the auditing standards are very evolved. The finance function itself is very evolved. So all those concepts that you are learning for some of you in the room doing your CMA or CFA or other charters or other uh, other programs, extremely relevant in today's time. As a financial analyst, you can be in capital markets, you can be in investment banking, you can actually think about programs right here um, to kind of couple with your CPA or other programs. The Indian Chartered Accountancy, for example, excellent programs to help you to grow. Um, at the end of the day, it's not just the qualification, it's how much you have absorbed practically. And how can you put that to your good use, right? So opportunities are there everywhere. You can, of course, think about going to the US. The challenge is immigration today. It's not your academic qualification. It's hard to get a quick job. The H1 visas are hard to get. 
L1 is take their own time. You have to be working in Indian businesses to qualify the to qualify for the L business, the L business visa or the which is the intra company transfer visa, and traveling therefore it will take some time. So if you are thinking about a career internationally, one thing I can I've seen is a US CPA uh, qualification or program is almost like a golden passport, but you have to make it work. Okay, it's not just having a tag that gets you there. It allows you to open your mindset, keep learning, keep upgrading. and then you can put this qualification to great use you can of course be in india and if with a fearless approach set up a firm here and start practicing for those who are passionate about client services for those who like to service customers service clients have your own firm or come together two or three people five people and set up a firm and start generating uh, client meetings go and meet people tell them what you can do for them and you will get work there there are of good professionals there is a huge opportunity i told you the example of 1.3 billion people and how you can come down to a market size if whether you are in hyderabad bangalore chennai or mumbai delhi or whichever or whichever location a tier 2 town or tier 3 town doesn't matter there's lot of opportunities available in the marketplace it's for you to demand or in, it's for you to kind of uh, demonstrate your competence and you will demand client attention by default you will if you're doing well you start commanding it and people will kind of reach out to you for ideas for opinions for advice and that is friends the way to think as a finance professional um i want to take a pause here and i want to open this set for questions so that i can give you some more pointed answers um shripal over to you uh vai bob uh, this was one of the fantastic uh, presentations we had and every speaker tells me that shripal you always tell at the end that this was the best session and uh, i don't know how many speakers you have said that so when uh, shailesh sir was there and when even some of the speakers from mastercard and all so they keep telling me that but i must agree that this was one of the uh, enlightening sessions for everyone but uh, some of the things uh, we have like students though i keep talking to the students and uh, on behalf of them one question is what they always ask me that sir you always tell that there are opportunities for cpa and all for practice but how do i approach if i want to start something on my own if i want to start something on my uh, like i want to start or set up my cpa practice or my ca firm what is that starting point is there any practical steps how can they go what how they should approach because they are not in us also so should they take a business visa and go in there because there are so many institutes also who are misguiding the students that with the cpa you will straight away go to us as you know web of that's not true because that can't be possible because h1 is a work permit and it is not an easy visa to get into because so many of them are uh talking on those institutes and telling them that you'll get an h1 and go there and get some 2 lakh dollars 1 lakh 50 thousand dollars so i wanted to throw uh, some light on that but from your end how do we kind of what are those practical steps which we can do it so that's a great question uh i was just answering somebody on the chat box about the book so i've just written it on the panel it's the effective executor okay shripal to answer your question i think in some way i've addressed it but let me go step by step i am a young professional i am 25 years old or whatever is my age and i want to start i think the cpa is for me and i want to start a practice in india or i want to start a practice in us now let's address practice in india first i have to be very convinced myself that i have understood the whole finance ecosystem accounting tax corporate finance funding fund management capital allocation budgeting so i have now i have understood it now the first thing i would do is question myself am i competent in each of these or do i need more help if i need more help i i would first recommend joining an organization and getting this concepts cleared practically because no client is going to come to me or even if after coming to me if i can't deliver i'm not going to grow my practice so first make sure that i understand this it's like saying that as a doctor i should be able to prescribe a medicine otherwise why will a patient walk into my clinic right so the first thing i would reflect and say yes i have a qualification but do i know the practical nuances enough so therefore upgrade yourself to that level yes your cpa tag helps the chartered accountancy tag helps in chartered accountancy we have this concept of article ship that's the it's an amazing concept as an intern as an article trainee you get to learn everything and more 
in a two and two and a half, three year construct as you are taking your exam. Similarly, even though I've done my CPA, if I have not worked somewhere, I would first want to work somewhere, get some practical exposure. That should be the starting step. And then I'll answer the second part of the question, Shripal. Once I have done that, I have to say straight away, I'm very clear, this is my competencies. So think of again a doctor, right? I can be a general practitioner. I can see any patient and give any medical advice or give medicines. Or I say I want to specialize. So I say, okay, I understand taxes better, or I understand accounting better, or I understand GST better, let's say, or I understand the debt finance game better. What is my specialization? Do I want to be a general practitioner? Do I want to specialize in something? That's the second fundamental question that somebody has to answer. It's not easy. These are not easy questions. One should not be going by the glamour of, oh, here is my friend who's an investment banker in JP Morgan. I want to be an investment banker. Don't go by the glamour of all of this. Go by your aptitude. Go by what you are good at. So the, the thing I would examine, therefore, is generalist versus specialist. That is definitely an important decision to take. Once I make that decision, one may say, okay, let me start doing everything and then I'll come to a specialization. That could be a way to go. Start a general practice, get some auditing work, get some accounting work, get some tax work, and then see where my competency lies. Ultimately, you're going to get clients in India for Indian work. Now, if you are a CPA and you want to do international work, you have to build a practice. Okay, You have to spend some time in the US for sure, understand the way US functions, um, now, the, the, the challenge there is how do I get to the US? And that's an immigration question. As you rightly said, Shripal, H1s are not available. It's a work permit. The current administration has made it difficult. It's going to take some time. So how do I get there? B1, B2, B1 is a business visa. I can't really work. I can only go for training and I can go for business meetings. So therefore, use this time till you can go to the US to learn and to practice some of those concepts here. Join a firm who is practicing as a CPA firm in India, for example, join one of the larger firms and understand how they are functioning. And those learnings will help you to actually start off your own, of, uh, start off on your own, either in US or in India, when you're eligible to do. Whilst it's not easy, certainly it is not as difficult. There's nothing impossible here. Pe people have started firms, you know, very regularly. They've always grown their firms. If you stick at it, it's not going to be that the next day you're going to get a fat paycheck. That's not going to happen. As we all know, when we start up a business, we have to invest a good two, three solid years in creating something. Once you've created, you will start making money. But you, it, it's a game of patience. It's a game of constant belief in yourself, upgrading yourself always, learning. And the more you go deeper, you go deeper end of the swimming pool, that's how you're going to learn swimming. You can't sit on the shallow end and and flap your hands, that's not going to happen. You got to do the hard work. Take a cricket parlance. To reach into the Indian cricket 11, you want to start with basics, school cricket, college cricket, university. So it's a step-by-step -step process. Then you come in Ranji Trophy and then you get noticed and then you come in the main team. So you will grow. Don't expect miracles overnight. But if you have the confidence in your abilities, there's a lot of work available. Sitting in India, you can do good quality US work. It's a question of your knowledge and then your ability to demonstrate, write more, speak more. You got to ensure that you got to, you, you got to tell your clients and tell your potential clients that this is what you stand for. So when I'm using my LinkedIn and when I'm writing about something, people sit up and take notice. If I've got 500 people who are following me, you will get questions. So, you know, somebody in the panel, a uh, panelist, uh, Deep G Singh has just written, how will a finance account person get exposure in operational areas as CFO is spending a lot of time in strategic role areas. I think this is an excellent question, Deepji. So the way I will answer that is, you got to be a thinking about the business model first. To me, even when I was an auditor or even as a tax professional or as a M&A professional, understanding of the business and understanding of the industry is very, very critical. If I'm in a pharmaceutical company, if that's my client, I need to understand pharmaceutical industry first. I'm, I have to first understand the business model of this company. Then I start taking part in day-to-day -day operational areas. Okay, the exposure will happen when I start interacting with the finance team, the sales team, the marketing team, the HR team, the, the management, and learn day-to-day -day areas. How are they transacting with customers? How are they transacting with the internal teams? Once I get that exposure, then I start applying my finance knowledge to giving them strategic decisions. Have they thought through the growth aspects? Have they thought through their business plan? Have they thought through value creation? And 
it's a constant dipti to answer this it's a constant evolution of your knowledge and your thought process combined with how the organization is growing and maturing so you got to be a consultative approach and advisory approach to growth all right um uh, yes, if i can move on to the next one yeah i will unmute some of them uh, sure. guru gurmeet you can talk now guys others please raise your hands uh gurmeet naina but if you can read the questions you can uh, shripal also ask the question in the interest of time yeah what is your normal practice madhu is having a question sir what are tips for creating network in cpa practice in india so there are already enough networks available on linkedin itself there are finance professional groups or there are a lot of networks available uh, it's not about creating a network okay uh, if you want to set up a practice first get yourself academically and knowledge wise known in the marketplace start contributing back start writing technical writing leads to technical marketing people set up and take notice you get invited to speak you create your brand and then people will come seeking you out so if shripal ji puts a ppt on his linkedin or on semander education web page talking about a few topics about cpa career or the finance or the auditing world people will review it that's how you create a brand so first create your brand okay you will automatically start creating a network people will want to get associated with you on linkedin and you have created a network then you so cpa practice is nothing but an accounting practice it's a question of your contribution and the way you think about transactions so let's say if reliance has picked up future group last week go to linkedin and comment about the transaction talk about whether the exchange ratio was fine whether the valuation was fine whether the 25000 crores that future group is going to get or their bankers are going to get is that um, the right valuation model what could i have done differently go out and make a comment about it everybody writes about it the the newspapers will write but you give your original thought people will set up and take notice i found that it was a very aggressively priced deal the bianis have got off scot free uh, i thought um, the group will be further squeezed but i was pleasantly surprised that they still got a good value and i think it's a win win model obviously reliance group knows how to grow but you need to give your own take and say here is how the 25000 crores that is going to go to the banks the loan the creditors etc etc and the assets that are coming in we think there is a gap now if you make that comment people will sit up and take notice and that is how you kind of get people to know about you so i think we had reliance cfo also last time rajneesh sir addressing this uh, guys i'm sure they didn't ask i was happy that they didn't ask him how much facebook is investing because he already called me up and said chaipal no questions on facebook investing in jio and all sort of stuff so uh, any tips to be a part of harvard for phd or mba after i get my cpa and gre or gmat done kritika arora sure so again uh, great question kritika i would first build a practical experience and a repertoire of knowledge application you know having done your cpa getting a great gmat score all all that is good very very important if you want to do your mba phd you will do later you can't do phd right now first you have to get your business management program or a, a masters and then a masters program then you get invited for a phd but if if harvard is your goal you are talking right up there the top 3 top 5 institutions in the world great ambition to have make sure that all your grades are good you are doing very well in your percentile your gmat scores are good and very important is get 5 years and i am underscoring this Five years of managerial experience under your belt. Don't apply to Harvard without that. You will not even be considered. Now, I remember growing up and meeting Professor Krishna Palepu at HBS. Those years, I'm talking about early 90s, and this is the advice that he gave me then: get your five years managerial experience. And when I say managerial experience, you are managing people underneath you. You are managing teams. maybe at the age of 27 28 between 26 and 30 is a great age ideally 27 28 that's the time you apply don't try to apply at the age of 21 and 22 you will not even be considered very few people qualify much lower age and if you are part of an entrepreneurial group if you have entrepreneurship in your family and you have been running businesses you automatically qualify 
because you're managing people. But otherwise, get that experience and then you apply. Okay, there are a lot of other tips. If you go to hbs.edu, okay, they have a special page, a lot of material for would-be MBA aspirants. Uh, they have a blog. You can talk to existing students. They have this Harvard Business School Club in India. The HBS Club in India also shares a lot of this tips. I will keep sending some stuff, um, uh, Shripal, which you can distribute to the students. Sure, sure uh -huh. So I think that is one way to think about. And this, this answer holds good for any Ivy League, not just Harvard. Any Ivy League, any good organization, or a, a good university, a good school, you get to get your credentials with managerial experience. That is very important. Uh, good evening, sir. I am a chartered accountant and willing to pursue CPA Canada. My question is, do we have any firms in India other than Big Four where I can get Canadian audit or tax exposure? That's a little challenge, honestly. You will not have too many firms practicing in India about Canada. But you will have firms which have got some affiliates in Canada and you can, so go to a, some of the, let's say the top 20 firms in India, they would have something in Canada, either an accounting firm or a CCA, CPA firm uh, out there outsourcing some BPO work of Canadian companies or even outsourcing audit and taxation today. Certainly they would be not easy to find. US is far more. Um, but the way I would think is Canadian immigration is easier. Canadian immigration is its point-based system. It's faster. It's easier. I would say get your accounting professional qualifications of Canada sitting here, which you can do. For the exam, you might have to travel there and Sripalji can guide you more about how do you take that exam there. But um, get your qualification, get your Indian experience. You will get the immigration much faster. And so what uh, actually, Vaibhav, I just wanted to add, sorry to abstract because uh, we normally recommend the people to do US CPA after they pass CA or who are pursuing right. CA. So what happens with US CPA, they have an MRA with Canadian CPA. So they don't yeah. need to write any exam and they need to have two to three years of experience. So a lot of my friends have got PR sitting in India. They just went two days to Canada there because you need to go once to get a PR. So right. one of our faculties from Simandar herself have got PR, Dhanushri. So she used to teach regulation. So she was our CPA faculty and uh, she applied for CPA. Uh, uh, I mean, she did her US CPA and then she applied for PR and she got it. And what do you think, Vaibhav? Is that a good route getting oh, the PR of Canada and then moving to US rather than moving to US directly? I don't know about moving to the US part. I'm not the immigration expert there, Shripalji, but that's something which a lawyer can tell you. But certainly get into a country. See, the end of the day, believe you me, whether you are in India or Canada or US, if you have the knowledge and the gumption, you are relevant. People will call you there. You don't have to travel there. You don't have to scatter for that location. If once you have created a knowledge base and you start applying the knowledge base, people will seek you out. They will want your experience, your expertise, and you will get invited to actually go and present models or to work there. That is a way to think. Now, I know it may look a little idealistic, but it's not difficult. Okay, so I, I can tell you somebody mentioned about PhD as well. And I'll just take one more example, Shripalji. A very good friend of mine from Chennai, uh, I can't name it right now, I can't name him, but let me tell you, he did his Bachelor's of Science BSc program. Okay, and then he said uh, he developed an economic theory using algorithms and using statistical model to predict okay, the stress in the banking system. Banks, when they are over leveraged, like today, a lot of loans becoming NPS. He developed a model. He used his basic intelligence and said, here is how stressful banks uh, can get. And therefore, here is how they will fail. And he sent it to JP Morgan. Okay, so you have JP Morgan Chase. You had Mr. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Demon, the, the, uh, the, the chairman, the CEO. He looked at it and said, this is such a revolutionary thought process. Simplistic model, yet very profound. He invited this guy over from Chennai for a discussion. And he said, I am sponsoring your US pay. Okay. Now, Jamie Dimon doesn't get it every day. Okay. He maybe he saw something. And this model today is McKinsey's model for assessing stress. Hmm. A 24 year old guy, a science graduate, telling Jamie Dimon, you know, JP Morgan Chase, how to think about stress in his balance sheet. Remember, it's not even an accounting profession, not even a finance profession. This example I took just to drive home a point that with knowledge, you can do wonders. Look at Professor Ashwat Damodaran's website. If you click, if you Google Professor Ashwat Damodaran, 
New York, NYU, uh, Stern, of, Stern School of Business. And all his theories on valuation are all right up there. His videos, that is a way to learn valuations. Everything is up there. And then you couple it with a nice program like CPA, and then you do a ABB, the accredited business valuation with the AICP offers. You can have a great valuation kind of you know um, profession uh, to your doorstep. You become a valuation professional sitting here. And then you can value anyone and everyone. Going physical to a location, forward a starter is no longer necessary. You don't need to physically travel. So the ABV program, an excellent program, but you have to first be a CP and then you can do ABV. So super specialization could be one other strategy, Sripal, that uh, students can employ. So I think that's a very valid point, Weber, because a lot of them want to do 10, 20 things. Even in practice, I would say that specialization is very important. If you uh, select one area, keep writing articles on that on LinkedIn. You have encouraged so many of our students to keep posting something on knowledge based on one thing so that they become an expertized in that. And uh, even when we had EY tax leader Ashu that time, so he was also telling us that to more to write on any of the topic which they like and keep posting that on LinkedIn, tagging some of the influencers, automatically they keep getting the yeah. connections and all. So uh, I'm sure look at the power, as you rightly said, Shripa, look at the power of LinkedIn, look at the power of Twitter, look at the power of Facebook. You can reach worldwide audience. You can post your video on YouTube. People will watch it if it's good. You'll become viral and it'll spiral out of your hands. And that is the way there's no cost to it. It's all about thinking innovatively. Isn't it? And I think uh, till now, no student or anyone have posted on any area some videos. They normally uh, put some videos on the uh, teaching part, like because I'm promoting CPA, so I might keep uh, uh, talking on my oh. CPA stuff and all. But I've not seen any student uh, writing, uh, talking on a topic of technical things. So I think they can create some channels or some uh, topics of knowledge and they can post. So that's a fantastic uh, point, Weber, which you have spoken. Good evening, sir. Any tips for a science background BTEC student who's keen to enter into financial studies like CA, CPA and all? Well, the fact that you are thinking about doing a CA or a CPA itself is a great starting point. That's the biggest tip that you have. Okay. So it doesn't matter. Like I said, you can be having a science background or an art background or whichever background. The way I would think is develop a passion for finance. Okay. You will qualify your CPA exams. You will do well. I'm pretty sure. But start reading Economic Times. Get an ET app or get a business standard or a business line, uh, Wall Street Journal, New York, Time, New York Times. All of these financial dailies, get them, get their apps on your, either on your phone or keep visiting their website and keep reading. Okay, the more you read uh, Financial Times in London, for example, it'll tell you everything about Europe. The Wall Street Journal tells you everything about the US. Economic Times and some of the Indian financial dailies will tell you about the economic and the financial world in India. Keep making notes about what have you understood, what have you not. When I started my career, I remember early 90s, I used to read Economic Times every day in a local train. And I still have that habit. My day doesn't start till I've read Economic Times. Whether I've read anything else, I want to know which business is doing what, what are the trends, how are corporates doing what they're doing. So get that passion to learn finance. Um, and the best way is to look at the real time, what are businesses doing? If you can analyze, again, uh, look at annual reports and look at a Reliance annual report or look at any of the top 50 listed companies, HDFC Bank, TCS, Infosys, download their annual report from the investor page on the website. Try and read that from the first page to the last page. If you like what you have read, Okay, doesn't matter whether you come from finance background or a science background, you will do very well in the profession or in the finance world. Have a liking for it. I think then it's a question of just practicing and then your qualification will take you everywhere. That's a, such a beautiful answer, Weber. Actually, we have our group of stock market also in Simandar. So I keep sharing a lot of these stocks, results and all. I'm not sure how many people, because once they added in the group, they just asked me which share to buy and hardly half of them don't even do research. I think today we'll need to keep uh, actually tracking those guys who are not doing any research and blindly asking me. So I think any specialized session after doing CPA, uh, that's what Gangadhar is asking. One can, one can certainly do CFA Gangadhar if you want to get into equity and research, financial analysis. But I tell you, don't worry about too much about the, 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 the qualification. Once you have done your CPA, that itself is good. So certainly CFA, CFA helps. But I would say start developing the habit okay, of reading annual reports, reading investor presentations, 
most listed companies on a quarterly basis when they announce their earnings some of the better ones have earnings release they have their cfos and ceos and management talk about their numbers talk about growth try and make start understanding that most of them post it on the website as well sebi requires them to do that so you if you start understanding analyst presentations that will be a great start to be in the capital markets career and then start questioning them pick up one share supposing i want to know more about reliance right or more about hdfc bank pick up one share from the market okay don't invest too much just to understand and then start asking questions of the management ask them you've said this i don't agree or i agree explain this you will get answers within 48 hours that's the way to learn like i said every page of your annual report if you can start making sense of it that is what is specialization to my mind you don't need to have a very fancy qualification beyond cpa and ca so that's good enough of course there are excellent programs available um, on uh, finance education or capital market education you have bombay stock exchange technical training institute i know the bsc technical institute gives you a lot of training programs skill based programs on analyzing trades uh learning trading learning about investments warren buffett theory and one last comment i have on this is warren buffett has you know berkshire hathaway berkshire hathaway the website gives you his letters of last 40 50 years his annual letter to stockholders so warren buffett berkshire hathaway annual letter to stockholders if you read up those letters every february he posts an annual letter for the last almost 40 50 years he's been doing it consistently start reading those that itself is the treaties in finance treaties in capital markets treaties in how do you think about investments and making money and there are a lot of books available on warren buffett if you just do an amazon search you will get a tons of them there is one book that i would specially recommend U- university of berkshire hathaway it's a green color book read that book it's uh, the online edition is available you will get insights about some wonderful organizations and how they have been created and how Warren Buffett and the Berkshire Hathaway team, Charlie Munger and others have invested and how they have grown and made money. So the Uni- University of Berkshire Hathaway is the name of the publication. That's certainly a good book to read. Uh, uh, Weber, one question is from Amit. I'm a CA chartered accountant, company secretary, CISA, and pursuing US CPA with 15 years of experience in ERP finance. I'm very much interested in IT audit, data security. Do you think it's an ideal time now to switch my career at this stage of my career um i mean this is not a yes or no answer um i would never give a yes or a no to you the way to think is it audit okay data security data analysis is that something that excites you okay very important to know that see you have a great professional technical background you're already qualified as a chartered accountant company secretary cisa you've got erp finance experience you're doing a cpa which you'll do very soon if it audit data security data analysis that is interesting to you you are passionate about it believe me there is no better time than today everybody needs this security today and data security and data breaches you have been reading it almost every day in newspapers even the prime minister's twitter handle got hacked hmm. now yeah. or you know a lot of large also last week yeah a lot of large businesses their websites are getting hacked emails are hacked so obviously data security data breach is very critical um it audit again information system audit very critical you've done your cisa so i don't have to tell you that so if you think that you are passionate about it by all means there's never a right time to do something there are you know it's not about this 15 years or otherwise i would simply say think about this and the opportunity is there if you ask me from an opportunity perspective definitely there's no question but it's a very personal question because you've done a lot of other things why would you do cpa if you want to do it audit and data security if you are doing your cpa it's not the tag again believe me you have to make use make good use of the skills okay so it's all about being application oriented is the way i would i would think and i would answer this so you you know think through it security data security learn those concepts and then apply them to forensics apply them to data breaches talk to hackers uh, ethical hackers understand the way they think look at all the cyber security rules uh, you know data privacy rules gdpr for example in europe uh, so you need to think through those and whether if that is interesting to you by all means it, there is never a wrong time to do uh, to switch uh, for annual reports which website is good google <laughs> you don't need any fancy software just google it up 
if you say hdfc bank annual report you will get it you get the link you don't need any any database it's all available so i am working with one of the big four in us tax department i want to start my own cpa fund tax practice what is your suggestion like post my cpa qualification shall i look to join a mid size cpa other than big four to gain more exposure and understand the business model and to have a closer look on how it works certainly like i said you to equip yourself sumit you want to make sure that you have understood how the practice as a professional service world works okay that is important you know your taxes very well you know your us taxes etc which is great federal state you understand the differences you know what it takes now the question is why should a client come to you and why should uh, people join you if you are going to start your own firm practice right for that you got to have a great understanding of the world of professional services now running a professional service firm is very different from running a business organization in a lot of ways yet it is similar in some ways you still need a business plan you still need to think through the business model of the professional services um what is your chosen market who is your customer how are you going to address it you have to think through all of those and therefore gaining exposure is critical you need to understand and be in a firm whether it's a big firm or a medium sized firm or small firm not very material the question is am i getting the right exposure have i understood the working business model so try and understand that and then of course you can go and start your own practice so uh, should he join a mid size cpa firm or should he join a big four i am i am indifferent to that shripa he can join even a small firm doesn't matter small mid size or large firm the question is is that firm going to give him the exposure that he needs okay the understanding that he needs how to start a special service firm how about knav <laughs> certainly hr at knavcpa.com by all means <laughs> let him just send an email our team will take a look absolutely okay. happy to uh, you know uh, you know so everybody and anybody is welcome uh, of course there are times of the year when we recruit but our hr team will always be responsive and they will tell you if there's an opening and we'll also recommend if there's any other uh, you know good firm to look at certainly happy to help you i am here to help you guys uh, use my time to best effect uh, happy to kind of uh, you know share whatever i know how to get the clients work from us from india by setting up an entity in india uh, sorry could you repeat that shripal So Gangadhar has a question. Anything which we need to go in advance, like setting up an entity now, even if we have not qualified as a CP at present, how to get the clients work from US from India by setting up an entity in India? See, setting up the entity is not the first thing that you do. You can even practice in your personal name. Of course, it helps to have an entity, but first qualify. Okay, you need a license to practice. You cannot practice US audit and US tax sitting here. you got to when i say sitting here you need a license to perform services just like you need a license to drive a car on a road or you can't have a south african chartered accountant practice indian start signing audit reports of indian company sitting in south africa similarly you can't be signing us audit report sitting here you need to be licensed in a particular state so remember first get your license once you have a license then you can do lot of things sitting here and there are things which you have to go there and do for example i was talking to shripal the other day inventory you can't audit a manufacturing company without having observed its inventory for that you have to be physically there or you have to get somebody in your team to go there and look you can't perform specific all procedures sitting at home there are procedures which need physical presence but most importantly the state licensing laws the state mobility rules have to be studied very clearly and you have to then follow the rules of that state in us if there are 52 state every state has got its own licensing rules so depending on where your client is you need to be authorized and licensed to perform those services once you do that then you can definitely kind of offer all of the cpa services so can we join your cpa firm working from africa that's an interesting question now when you say africa if you are qualified and if you are licensed why not if you are not having a license and you want to join our firm certainly if your credentials um you know meet our requirements and of course if our firm leadership has a uh, opportunity in africa they will certainly take a look we know in covid times some of our partners have expressed a thought that we may have remote teams so i would never say no it's not about can you join if you qualify certainly we'll be happy, happy to take a look so uh, prateek is asking do knav hire ca having no post qualification in audit or tax who wants to do us cp and grow his career in us audit or tax um the way i would answer that is if you have the knowledge base please apply 
you will be tested. Of course, we have specific tests on whether you are joining audit or tax. We have separate teams. So the teams will look out for your experience or look out for your qualifications, talk to you, get you assessed. And then if they feel and if you jointly feel that it's a good proposition, sure, why not? I would never say no. Okay. Yes, guys, any questions? One, any, is there any innovative work that a CPA can do other than doing a job or a practice? Of course, look, you can sit at home and still do a lot of things. Okay, think differently. Think, you don't have to have a job or a practice. You can be a startup model. You can actually start a business. You don't have to just be in professional services and service customers. You can, if you have a business idea, you can apply your CPA knowledge and skills to try and see how can I solve a customer problem. So there are a lot of problems that customers have, right? Now think of in COVID time, I'll take just as a, take a simple example, working from home, how can I be more effective at working from home? Now, can you solve that business challenge? If you have an idea, create a startup, people will fund your ideas today, put your little own capital, friends and family capital, take money from startup funds and demonstrate that why your solution can solve this business problem or business challenge and sky is your oyster. You don't have to just do a job or be into a profession. You can have your own business. So please guide career option for IT professional, SAP and Oracle finance consultant with CA background and pursuing CPA in finance area. Is it a good idea to reinvent the wheel after 14 years? Again, uh, ma'am, time doesn't matter whether it's 10 or 14 or 20. If you, as, as an IT professional with your SAP and Oracle finance background and chartered accountancy background pursuing CPA, you have all the skill sets that are required today by businesses, right? So I would look at, uh, look at a finance organization within a larger business unit and look at the technology side of finance. There's a lot of technology integration that happens in corporate finance. When Reliance is buying in Future Group, there's a lot of integration that they will have to do. You have the right experience and the expertise to be part of that team. It's a hundred people team. It's not a two or three people team. And you will learn, you will contribute. So that's just one way to think, right? Integration in a, in, in a larger organization. You can also have a IT specialist firm focusing on financial controls and risks and control metrics from a, from a financial perspective using your technology skills. That's the consulting opportunity that you can create out of this. It all depends on whether you, you want to start up a firm, be into practice as a professional, or you want to join an entity accordingly. But in both cases, there are enough opportunities. So one of my students, Keshav, though he have asked one question, one question he keeps asking is the trade finance opportunities for CPA, trade finance roles. So do we have something like that in India where we get exposure to trade finance roles? Because he has been always specific to that. So, so you can go to banks. There are a lot of trade finance opportunities, Shripal, um, which I can recommend. So there's ICICI trade finance, Kotak trade finance, and they do a lot of Indo-US financing and they enable trade between two countries. So their trade finance units are the ones to apply. Definitely there are opportunities. So let's say if I'm an entrepreneur and if I'm selling goods to the US or buying goods from US, I'm doing international trade. I know, normally go to the ICICI trade unit to see, can I discount my export bill? What is the product that you can give me from a finance perspective? How do I leverage the banking expertise and yet get my uh, a solution for financing my working capital and for ensuring that I collect my debts faster. So definitely trade finance, there is a role, but the right forum to apply would be some of the larger banks who are on the international corridor of banking. Being a CPA, can I set up an entity in US since I would not be having an SSN at the moment, which is social security number? Well, one can set up an entity. You need a social security to open a bank account, to get a tax ID number. So you will need somebody as an officer in your organization whose SSN you will use to get a tax ID number, or you go to ITIN, uh, you go to uh, the IRS and apply for an SSN on the uh, uh, EIN number or a tax ID number for a company on the phone. So if you don't have an SSN, you can still open. The answer is yes. The solution is go to IRS, okay, and get a telephonic EIN, and that's how you can open a bank account. So setting up the entry doesn't need an SSN. Bank account needs and the EIN needs. And that's where you can... Uh, kind of bypass it by doing a phone call and get it. Or you go to a bank and give your passport and say, I'm an overseas resident, open my bank account. 
but it is normally recommended that you have a local officer from a tax perspective as well it's better hi sir i have 12 years of experience in investment banking and would like to get into accounting or auditing will i still be treated as a fresher both in terms of experience and cdc the answer is no you will not be treated as a fresher natraj because you if you are into investment banking you understand businesses you understand finance side of that you understand capital raise you understand buy and sell so definitely you understand organizations and businesses now when it comes to accounting and auditing as long as you have the skill sets you can demonstrate that you are not just a fresher because you know how the balance sheet looks you know how what is valuation and certainly you'll be much more than a fresher and then you have to demonstrate competence and skills when it comes to accounting and auditing Uh, how to know ins and outs of kpo and outsourcing accounting many accounting startups are venturing into outsourcing what is the future scope in outsourcing great scope outsourcing has been there for last 20 odd years will continue for the next 50 years look at the end of the day it's this is economics outsourcing is all about economics right you want to outsource your non core function let's say finance and accounting function if you're a larger organization in us or wherever to a organization which can give you efficient service efficient delivery right so there is always going to be that outsourcing both a kpo and a bpo will outsource their process you know a um, lot of organizations will outsource their processes to kpos and bpos collection function invoicing function ar function ap function pure accounting function mis function investor reporting most of these functions people would like to outsource if they are assured of reliable service quality timeliness uh accuracy if you can learn that and build it uh, build a business model around it there's a lot of opportunity and we have been india has been very successful in outsourcing because of our english speaking skills because of our i4 detail and because of our process orientation if we can get all three together i see a huge opportunity it's a continuing huge opportunity what technological skills apart from the tax technicals will you look for in a tax professional look um basic knowledge of technology helps but today i would say sumit that if you are more conversant with advanced technology features you know in excel for example you know can you do advanced excel not just pivot tables but really write some programs think about better maker checker when as a tax professional can i get my can i automate my deferred tax computation worksheet accounting for taxes worksheet can i automate the computation of tax using basic checks and balances you don't need big coding language uh, uh, you know understanding but those skills definitely set you apart since you said uh, you know how do you what do you look for a tax in a tax profession these are good things to have not necessary but otherwise of course basic understanding of uh, how technology environment works definitely helps uh, i would simply look at if you ask me today i would look at algorithm based models look at, i would definitely want an understanding of data science and data analytics and there are a lot of programs available sitting at home which you can use to learn those again it's it's about passion for learning on technology that will help you to have a great tax career sumit i think that's all we had uh, web of sir we have already surpassed your time uh, uh, actually sangeeta said me that you have a call at 8 o'clock so 8:10 it that's is 8:15 right, that's all right no okay <laughs> so i don't, okay. I don't want again uh, that you tell me sripal you have consumed the time so that's why i just wanted to be careful so i think we are done with most of the questions i think we have still 5 minutes if anyone wants to close up with couple of questions more i think webo is still there for more 5 minutes anyone have any questions not sure why am i not able to unmute this because they are raising hands and i think that's it uh, web sir uh, none of them have any okay any books to understand different types of business models um you know there is the original work on management the book is called management by peter drucker that is a great book to start understanding organizations um if you can pick that up it's again available very freely i think that's a good way to start then from there on there are a lot of business model work that has happened but if you start with this i think um, uh, keshav desh would be good to start 
then one can of course look at innovation one can look at entrepreneurship various seminal publications and most of it today you will get it from the b schools but i will start with management first okay most of the tax provisions doesn't have logic how to build interest around these things it's a terrific well, i don't agree frankly that the tax provisions don't have logic in fact there are log- there is lot of logic there a lot of uh, you know there is lot of regulation around it but there is also logic and the logic is if a tax payer okay is getting deductions it is because he has made some investments or he has made some expenditure if a tax payer is getting tax credits it because some scheme is there to promote in india we have sazed scheme in us we have rnd credits etc if a tax payer is it has to is getting disallowed for an expenditure it's because it is not an allowable expenditure so there is always a logic to every element of a tax provision worksheet gangadhar that's how i would answer uh, but again i understand it's not it's not about it's not your question is how to build interest around these things the way to think is don't go by the just the tax code try and understand the essence of why this is being disallowed if meals and entertainment in us is disallowed at 50% There's an IRS logic to it. Go to irs.gov, irs.gov, and download that publication and understand why have they said 50% disallowance. That's how one would think about developing interest. So try and go to the base act in India. If you're studying income tax, go to the bare act and try and understand what does a proviso mean? Why is it? What's a deduction? That's how you will generate interest. So, Abhav sir, I have one question. Any good books on US gap and US tax? I think this question I get from so many students. They want to learn U.S. GAAP and U.S. tax. Is there any book on U.S. GAAP? If you ask me personally, U.S. tax, just go to irs.gov. Everything is there. You don't need. Of course, there are a lot of books available if you search online. But I look at irs.gov. That's how I have liked it. In in your Becker, in your in your CPA program, I'm sure uh, you have the basic that is required to qualify. Then there are tax guides available. If you talk of tax, I remember RIA checkpoint, RIA tax guide. A lot of tax guides available online. If you just do Google US tax guide, you will get plenty of them. That will give you more distilled information. But I would look at irs.gov and especially the IRS publications give you a lot of knowledge. They give you the fundamentals that you need to understand why a standard deduction is taken, why credits are given, why withholding taxes are there. Or understanding all of that nuances, I would start with the IRS publication. Uh, when it comes to accounting there are a lot of books on us gap on ifrs available um, in terms of authors there's wiley's a very popular book w i l e y wiley's it's available very freely i'm sure there are a lot more authors but again online also the ifac website aicpa website um, the fasb website financial accounting standards board they have a lot of this bare standards already available and one can look up those and download those standards and read them then there are a lot of if you look at the aicpa journal itself the journal of accountancy again it's a great publication to kind of understand the nuances of lot of accounting the journal of accountancy is it free or we need to pay for it yearly or membership fee for journal of accountancy that's a great question when i log in it comes with my membership i'm sure i i would assume it is, it would be available in free parlance let me check interesting question last 25 i haven't checked that because when i open it opens up the page but i have read a lot about aicp journal of accountancy so i got the license last year because of simander education the busy schedule i haven't got time to uh, no it should be available i'm pretty sure just just check once um yeah i think it would be available it's and and even if there's a cost it will be a very nominal cost i don't think they they are there to charge a lot of so but it's a great journal to read there's also bombay chartered accountant society bca journal an excellent publication the chartered accountant journal of the icai uh icaw has got its english uh, chartered accountancy journal again a great one um the international accounting standards board they come out with their international accounting bulletins they are great so a lot of a lot of publications available to upgrade yourself uh any last thought on why us gap and ifrs are not integrating or do, do we see in future that us gap uh, will also align to ifrs so uh, you know a lot of the principles are already there in both us gap is very rule based you know it's not about integrating or club us feels that uh, ifrs doesn't have enough rules it's more principle and 
in us every industry has got rules so as you get deeper into us get you realize that they tell you how to do revenue recognition for a software company there's a whole rule prescribed okay sec pcob bulletins lot of accounting technical guidance has been accumulated over number of years in ifrs you will not get lot of you will get some application but largely it's principles so therefore the two can't be clubbed together but certainly there's a lot of convergence happening a uh, lot of standards let's say lease accounting there's a lot of convergence but there's also divergence in disclosures right so it's not it's not a simplest thing that one can club it together but definitely convergence uh, is happening for sure i think thank you so much vaibhav this has been one of the most knowledgeable session for students in in terms of books in terms of ideas in terms of gaining everything on a teachers day i mean i can tell that i have learned a lot and uh, i'm sure the students have taken lot of the value adds from this and the session itself have given a value add because the session topic was on value and it have been a, a i would say a master class uh, from you webup sir it would be great if we can keep having that every 3 4 months like a quarterly where we can see you and talk to you i would be really happy if we can organize this again after a quarter or so whenever you are free i think it will give a good value add to our students and all in terms of what their thought processes are and uh, amazing session so thank you so much well thank you i'm glad um, you know it was of some value to everybody and let me conclude by you know uh, greeting everybody um, guys you you've taken the first great step do your cpa do a, all the professional qualifications but remember learning never stops keep being active acquisitive and inquisitive about knowledge we keep acquiring knowledge keep having the curiosity that is how professionals are built and that's how finance professionals will do very well so all the best to all of you thank you for joining in today and i look forward to being in touch right thank you very much thank you so much webup sir any last thoughts uh, sangeeta just on a closing note thank you so much thank you sir it was an insightful session with the entire simander family once again like to thank you that you took out your time from your busy schedule and shared the knowledge with us thank you it was great having you sir thank you so much thank you sangeeta and thank you for all the hard work to put this together appreciate that thank you thank you sir my pleasure thank you vaibhav sir thank you thank you shipal all the best cheers